Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Cowboy Mike. On this episode of BBQ, I am sitting down with Justin. We're going to talk a little bit about mindset. Um, and then we're going to do that in a very different way. But rather than get into it now, let's just jump right in. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Hey, what's up, Justin? How are you? Good. Going good. Going New good. year. New year, yeah. So, for those of you that have followed the podcast, Justin was on an earlier episode. I'm not sure what number it was. Do you, do you remember? I don't. You don't? so long ago. So, the reason why Justin is with us today is because he won this contest through the restaurant but I'm gonna let him tell that story rather than me give the recap. Uh, from the best of your recollection, Justin, how did that go? I'm actually pretty sure it was a, a year ago this month. Was I'm pretty sure it was in January. It was either middle of January or the beginning of February of last year. Yeah. I was working out of town and I came home from out of town and we had just got a big snowstorm. So I got done snow blowing my driveway, went and snow blowed my neighbor's driveway. My wife took a picture and saw the contest that Outlaw posted and submitted my application for it was uh, do something neighborly and win a sandwich, a free sandwich. Uh-huh. So I won that competition for snow blowing my neighbor's driveway and then won the sandwich. We got to talking, it was on a podcast, and a year later, here we are. Yeah. Now now I'm working at, at the restaurant. Yeah, now he's working at the restaurant. Um, All from a sandwich. So, thinking about that sandwich, when Justin came to Outlaw, one of the things he wanted to learn about was um, his own personal financial map. And we won't really pay attention to that part of the story more so podcast itself, we want to talk about mindset. So I want to ask you, um, how has how has that changed between when you first came, uh, you won that contest to bring that forward to today? Do you think your mindset has changed? I think my mindset has changed on a lot of different things since being, being around, you know, Everybody at Outlaw, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything's kind of... It's all about how you look at things, and, you know, you don't really... You don't really look at things the same once you've experienced or seen it from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. So you have you have your own vision of how you think things should look, you know. You know, money's one of them things. Everybody thinks that, you know, you got to do certain things to make money, and then you, you get around other people, and you realize that, you know, there's, there's more than one way to to make money just like they say there's more than one way to skin a cat there's there's more than one way to make money it's not as traditional or black and white as people may think it is you know and the 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 other side of that is money's not necessarily as important as everybody makes it out to seem either well that that's a funny funny story because justin has uh some very cool financial goals and uh one of the things that I can call out is he was very fixated at the beginning on, I need to make this much extra in order to achieve my goal. So he had a goal, and then as time marched forward, he recognized that his time while he was putting in the hours um, to make that that dollar figure, uh, he, he had a revelation that maybe that wasn't the best trade-off of his time when he looked at his overarching blueprint. And necessarily, I guess a, a good way to break it down is I had a dollar amount in mind that I wanted to invest mm-hmm. towards retirement and putting in the amount of time to reach that dollar amount 
in the traditional sense of actually, you know, grinding for it was, I don't want to say it wasn't worth it, but there's just better ways to utilize the time. I guess it comes back to the, uh, it's not, it's not that money's not the most important thing in the world. It's not, but it's, there's other ways to maximize your money with less effort, I guess, than in the beginning in the, in the beginning, you know what I mean? The ways that I thought you would do it in the beginning versus the ways we do it now mm -hmm. is, you know, you don't have to put as much effort towards maximizing maximizing your money to, to reach your goals. Yeah, I look at that, um, like people's speed, right? Right. And if you are going from here, say... Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you could go the speed limit, or you could go two or three miles over yeah. the speed limit. The, the real question is... Are you really getting there any faster? Right. You know, I actually have a real world scenario for that. It just happened the other day. Mm -hmm. So I was leaving work, I was leaving my house to go to work, and you know, it works like 15 minutes down the road from me right now on the job that I'm on, and... You know, I left my house at a normal time. You know, I wasn't in any rush or whatnot. I turned down 38th Street, and the guy behind me, he must have been in a rush, but he just so happened, I didn't know it at the time, but he happened to be going the exact same direction as I was, and he flew by me in the turning lane, mm -hmm. uh, in the middle lane going down 38th Street. Right. Flew by me, flew to the light, got through the light, you know, thought nothing of it. You know, I remembered the car because he was uh, driving like a jackass, so you remember it when it passes you. Right. Thought nothing of it, right? So I'm going about my, my, my drive, you know, driving normal, just doing the speed limit. Because I left on time for work, mm -hmm. and I get down maybe, you know, I'm like a minute or two from work. I'm like maybe six, seven, eight miles from where he passed me, and who do I pull up right next to the stoplight at? Like right next to him. Like I am <laughs> right in the lane. He's in the left lane. I'm in the right lane at the exact same stoplight. Nine minutes, nine miles down the road. There he is, right at that same thing. But he blew by me probably doing 30 over the speed limit. And it's not like he just did it for that stretch. At the rate he was driving, I guarantee you he was doing that the whole way to that stoplight that I ended up meeting him at. So did he really get there any faster? No. Nope. You know, going 30 over the speed limit, passing me on a, in a no passing lane? No, not really. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. Um, you know, we... We do barbecue, and one of the interesting things about barbecue is, uh, from my point of view, there's it's, it's a simple equation. It's time and temperature. Those are your main two variables. And everyone calls out, you have to, this time, this temperature, we're really you can play, especially with the temperature variable, quite a bit, and you know you can modify that that time. So I find that everything has a little bit of that variability. You can dial it in, uh, down or up, another way to put it, and still still end up with your your goal. Because if I remember. it to do mm -hmm. I looked at money back then I looked at money as very very solid state you know almost like you know it wasn't it wasn't something that you could just you know move to your liking you needed X amount of money to do this you you needed money to do that you needed 
you know, it had to fall within a certain constraint to work out. Mm-hmm. When in reality, you know, it just kind of as long as as long as you stay on the path, it just it always seems you know to work itself out some way, some way, shape, or form. I'm not saying that like if you need ten grand, you know, all of a sudden ten grand just appears. It doesn't it doesn't work like that. Right. But you know, depending on how you you view it, you know, there's always there's always a way to make it happen. There's always a way that it it kind of falls in as long as you stay on your path and you stay on you know the mindset of that's what you need to reach. It happens. It doesn't have to be so linear. I guess would be would be a good way to put it. I always thought money was a little more linear in the beginning. I would say. I mean, if that makes if that makes sense. Yeah. What what up for the listeners? Um, when you say linear. How does that? How does that look to you? I think at the beginning it was a. Uh, I don't know if I fully understood. You know, you know the compounding por- portion of it. You know, and I don't know if anybody really. You don't know what you don't know at the end of the day, and I, I really didn't understand. I didn't know exactly how that whole compounding thing worked. You know, I was very. I want to say old school in the term of it. Like if you wanted something, you had to save up for it. You had to save the cash. You had to have, you know, cash in hand. You know, to make things happen, but but you don't necessarily need to do that. There's investment accounts. There's you know, there's brokerage. There's investment. There's crypto. There's all kinds of different things that don't necessarily take a lot of work that can compound your money a lot faster than you can traditionally save your money. You know, it's not yeah. it's not it's not in the terms of you know, well, I need ten thousand dollars, so I've got to save a thousand dollars a month, and I'll have it in ten months. You know, there's not a lot of people that can save ten thousand dollars a month. I mean, a thousand dollars a month to get to that ten thousand. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of people that can, you know, spend a hundred dollars a month. You know, a lot of us, I would say, at least ninety percent of us, spend a hundred dollars a month on stuff that that's just, we don't necessarily need to. You know, how many times do we go out to eat? How many times do you stop and get that coffee at Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah. You know, if you if you really wanted that ten grand, instead of getting that coffee, you take that three dollars and you invest it. Or you set it off to the side to invest it at the end of the month. So you invest $100 at the end of the month, and, you know, and that compounds over the course of that 10 months. You know, you've just multiplied your money by not changing anything other than maybe you didn't get a coffee. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Versus having to, you know, well, do I save, you know, do I save $1,000 or do I pay my mortgage? Or do I save $1,000 or do I not get groceries this month, you know? Because that's what a lot of, I feel like, at least a lot of people that I know, maybe maybe a lot of people that are in, you know, my age group, you know, they look at it as, you know, well, you got to save that money to be able to do something with it. But a little bit can go a long way if you're smart about it or responsible, I guess, with it. The interesting part about that, I want to kind of add to your story, uh, because up till now, it's been a lot of money talk, but I want to shift it because it's about the, the pods about mindset and this plays into your compounding effect and mindset so i'm not hyper money focused i'm hyper time focused so i do things i spend money on things that can multiply my time yeah and as the story goes and we won't necessarily tell the whole arc but that's the crux of I think a big shift in Justin's mindset because he said this is how I'm spending my time and while I am making money uh, you didn't necessarily see the value even though you were getting closer to your to your numerical goal right right so how did you shift from numerical money goal focused to more time value focused i guess it just really came down to for me it was more of a it was a time value of where where did i value my time more did i value it working all the time you know to get towards a numerical number that in my head would magically solve all my issues or was it better spent doing things that I wanted to do you know that technically I might have been missing out on some money but you know 
what was what was worth more i guess is the is the true question what was worth more spending time with my wife and daughter or working 18 hours a day right right you know and you know there's sometimes we're working 18 hours a day you know you got to get stuff done you got to get stuff done that's just is what it is Mm -hmm. but doing that six seven days a week not necessarily worth the time you know because you're not at least at least in my in my personal experience it wasn't worth missing out on all the things that I was missing out right, right you know working all those 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 hours and you know making all that money so to say you know for what for for a long-term goal and missing out on the the short-term things in the here and now focusing mm-hmm. on so far in the future that I was missing out on things in the present mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's not some things just not worth it you know missing out on you know first steps or first crawling or first words or you know even just the little things you know what I mean like the the silly moments you have in the mornings or you know the days after work or you know sometimes that's worth exponentially more than having having a padded retirement account mm-hmm. well and, and I want to call this out because we if you're listening you may think we're going a little bit back and back and forth on this what's what's really of value here I'll call out that that is a very personal decision. No one can really assign uh, what's in your priority position moment to moment. No, 100%. That's just what's of value to the person. Mm -hmm. Everybody's everybody's different. Oh, that's another good story. Um, Justin and I have have had this long-standing debate balance you know the one I'm talking about oh yeah yeah <laughs> the, 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 the different definitions of, of what balance is yeah so Justin when he was first at outlaw so close to a year ago he's, he's lecturing me on balance which I think is cool because he gives me understanding on where his mind is at and what is balance and, and what role does it play? Yeah, I'm lecturing someone with twice my life experience about balance. <laughs> and I I thought it was cool, though. I, I did, because um, some people don't even know what that is. So I thought, well, he's a step ahead of the game because he actually can have this discussion. So that was a good starting point. But what is your, what is your journey in, in terms of understanding balance then versus now then versus now Mm -hmm. i mean balance then to me was you know it was you know you have 24 hours in a day you have to divvy up that set of hours each day individually you have to structure it which sounds crazy now 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 that i kind of say it like to to be able to do it like that Mm -hmm. it's it's not really you know and, and again this goes back to everybody's balance is different you know just like just like we said before it's you know everybody's was different so that was where we always you know had the discussion was your version of balance versus my version of balance Mm -hmm. is different and at the time i thought balance was balance you know you have to have a work-life balance you know you always hear everybody say that as as you're growing up oh you got to have a work-life balance you can't work all the time you have to have time to do this or time to do that and you know they're right but they're they're wrong at the same time. Everybody's version of what that balance is is different. Some people that balance might be working, you know, eight hours a day period. The rest of their day is devoted to whatever they want. Some people their their balance is, you know, I'm gonna grind out fifty hours and then I'll do something for myself after that, you know? Yep. And some people are are fluid, you know, you go day by day, you know, I have to be at work between this time and this time. After that, I just kind of fit things in where they go instead of forcing things in where you want them to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You gotta. For me, my balance was finding where I could fit things in where they naturally wanted to be, not forcing things to be where I thought they should be. Right. Right. And I think that's 
I think that's a big challenge for a lot of folks in, uh, we'll, we'll play in time management for a minute. There's a lot of things that you want to make happen. And a lot of people feel they have to happen when they want them to happen. And I think that's where people get jammed up. No, they have to happen. And a lot of the time, we're overbooked. Well, I'll go personal then generalize. There is no point in time in my day where I don't have something to do. Like, literally. There is my, my, my punch list, as you uh, have coined it. it Ever it, expanding. It, it's perpetual. Yes, it's growing. If we could harness your your punch list in a perpetual motion machine, we'd be able to solve a lot of a lot of world issues. Yeah, because it's constantly revolving and yeah. evolving and changing and adding and growing. Uh, Angel has this saying. She says, "Mike, I, I I come back the next day, and there's something new, and it's not just like oh, there's." bought new colored pens, right? It's, it's a lot of the time it's like oh. It's like a whole different list. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a, a, another huge project list that just materialized overnight. And and when I say materialize, someone calls us up and say, hey, we have this opportunity for you. And it literally comes out of left field. So Managing all that, you have to say, what can I do? When do I have a free moment? Or the way I do it anyway. It's, when I have a free moment, can I work on something? Um, I'll use social media in this this example. People say, um, you know, you spend a lot of the time, a lot of time posting, and, and the reality is, I do and I don't. I do, but as of this moment, I'm, I'm done through February. Like, I could do nothing between now and the end of February, and uh, it would be taken care of, handled. Everything's pre-scheduled, right? But when I have moments where uh, something doesn't happen, like the other day we had a Tuesday... We had a Tuesday meeting. It didn't necessarily go the way we had envisioned it to go. So what did I do during that time? Well, I worked on social because I had a free moment and I had the capability to do it there. I worked on that and I worked on uh, organizing some lists that these are things I think I could get to within uh, the next few hours. So really, that's an example of it being fluid, where where there are some people that would say, okay, from time A to time B, I'm going, every day I'm going to work on social, right? After that, I am going to read. And that works, and for the people that are parents out there, because this is an easy inflection point, for people that are parents, you start to recognize that that rigid structure of your day that you could maintain when you didn't have kids almost completely dissolves. Yeah, try telling your toddler, <laughs> you know what, it's time, I, I, I blocked out this time for me to read this book, you know, go away for right now, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work that way. Right. They're not. They're not actually like. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I wasn't in the schedule right here. Yeah. Let me. I'll just. Let me just come back during my scheduled time. And um, even if you don't have children, but if you're a small business owner, I guarantee you, you know, right? Stuff comes up. Stuff comes up that you have to deal with that wasn't on your schedule. And you have to make it work. So uh, my big takeaway for folks is when it comes to balance and time, 
and goals. There will there will be some days where you have to, yes, you have to go day by day, focus day by day, maybe even minute by minute sometimes. Uh, you got to keep going because just getting through the day won't get you across the finish line. So you have to keep your large goals in mind and you have to get through what you need to get to now and recognize that, you know, I'm not saying don't plan. I just recognize now that the plan you start with might not be the plan you finish with. Right. It's always good to have goals and it's always good to make a plan, but you shouldn't only ever have plan A. Mm-hmm. You gotta have, you gotta be able to be fluid and move with, with things as they change. I almost go into anything, and it's been this way for a while, that whatever the plan is, it almost might not precisely hook up the way it, the way it's mapped out, right? I don't think it ever, I don't, I don't think anybody's plans ever go, you know, hey, I'm going to accomplish this goal and I'm going to do it by doing this, this, and this. I don't think, I don't think it ever works out that way. I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. It, it never works out that way. You might always end up at your, your end goal. But at the end of the day, that's what matters is, you know, you set a goal, you get to that end goal, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it by the way you had first thought you were going to do it, you know. Mm-hmm. You like to quote Bruce Lee a lot when he was talking, when he talked about, you know, being like water. Yeah. You know, and that plays in, that plays into a lot of the mindset thing, you know, and, you know, when he, he said you got to be more like water, you know. You put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. The water doesn't care what you throw at it. The water adapts and overcomes and becomes what it needs to become to fill what you're trying to fill. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Um, there, there's a lot of things, at least from my perspective, that I think you've reworked. person, how do you think that filters into like the rest of your life? That changes a lot, you know. I, you know, this is this is a side job for me. So this is, a, you know, I, I still have my full time job during the day working as a union iron worker, and you know, and I'm in charge of a lot of different type of people, mm-hmm. and you can't treat everybody the same. Right. You just can't, you know. I'm. I'm at an age where there's a lot of guys that are older than me. You know, you can't talk to the guys that are older than you. Even though you're in charge, you can't talk to the guys that are older than you the same way you talk to the guys that are your age. And you can't talk to those guys the same way you talk to the apprentices that are just getting in. Mm-hmm. Just like you, just like you can't talk to the apprentice that's older than you the same way you talk to the apprentice that's younger than you. Even though they're both apprentices, you have to take a unique approach to each one of them because at the end of the day we're all we're all there to get a job done and it can either go easy or it can go hard and it all usually comes down to how people feel they're being treated you know and that's 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 a mindset thing you know in, in the terms of when a lot of a lot of guys become foremen in the beginning and I was guilty of it too is you know you become a foreman and you think that you have to do you have to do things a certain way. Well, I had a foreman that he talked to everybody like this. He he would scream and yell at everybody, but we always got things done, so that just must be the way it works. Mm-hmm. Or you work with a guy that, you know, well, he never really yelled or he never really was around. He just told us to do things, and we just always got it done. But then as you as you move on and progress, you realize that it's a, you know, the mindset thing is, you know, they, they were handling the guys that they had, in the ways that those guys need it. Some guys need to be yelled at to, to, to be motivated. That's just how some people are. Some guys need to be talked to, you know? It's, it's, you have to be fluid and you have to have the mindset of, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're in charge or not. We're there to get a job done. The job has to get done. It's, it's, not, it's not about, you know, I'm in charge, listen to me, do it my way. That doesn't get anything done. You know, it, it, at the end of the day, they put you in charge or they put a person in charge to reach an end goal. And that's what matters. It's not about everybody knowing who's in charge and, you know, 
showing up and being like, I'm the boss. It's not what it's about at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you're in charge to make sure a task gets done, make sure a job gets completed, make sure a building's put up. You know, and as long as that goal's reached, how you get there is fluid and it changes. Mm-hmm. You know? I think it's true in guiding people, uh, guiding kids as well. Uh, I think, I like how this sounds. I think I even put this in a post. You treat everybody the same by treating each person as an individual, right? Right. That That's the same. Everyone got treated like the unique person that they are. The coaching they received, the way things needed to be related to them, um, and that sort of thing. When you're looking outside, looking in, at, at least on the child side of it, maybe sometimes the, the worker side, they say, well, you don't treat us the same, right? Well, the question is, are you the same people? Are you the same? You're not the same person. Yeah, right? But like back to your example, an apprentice. An apprentice that's older than you and an apprentice that's younger than you. Well, they have different life experiences. Exactly. And how you relate to them becomes different. So, I think, at least from what I've been able to observe so far, treating difference, the wrong word, treating them as an individual seems to be better, resonate better. Right. Uh, But effectively, because they're a different person, different set of experience, that's what you're uh, kind of keying in on. Right. And trying to help them understand in the best way that they can. So, um, how's that, how's the mind shift, mind shift, uh, how's that affect home? How does it affect home? It's, uh, it's actually constant, it's constantly evolving, constantly changing, especially mm-hmm. having you know, such a young daughter at home, mm-hmm. you know, you got, you have to constantly change, mm-hmm. especially with her, you know, because she, she don't know things, she, she just don't, you know, yeah. she, she learns things day by day, she learns, she learns something new every day, yeah. especially at, at her age, she, she learns something new every day, so the way you're, the, the way you raise her and the way you let her go about things are totally different, you know. There, there's there's days where you're like, no, no, don't do that, don't do that. And then there's days where, okay, you know, she's going to learn. She's going to learn at some, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She wants to climb on the coffee table, and, you know, you can tell her no a thousand times, but she wants to climb on the coffee table, she's, she's going to learn how to climb on the coffee table. You know, you, there's just some things that you can't, you can't force a kid not to do. They're exploring, they're experimenting. They're, they're learning about their environment around them, you know. Mm-hmm. You have to let them... You have to let them climb on the coffee table. You have to let them fall off the coffee table. You watch them and you're there for them, you know, making right. sure that they don't, you know, totally hurt themselves. But that's how we all learn. Yeah. You know, we all we all climbed on things we were told not to climb on. And we were all told not to climb on them because the, the, the adult or the parent in our life knew that we would fall off and get hurt. But at the end of the day, we all still wanted to climb on that coffee table and fall off that coffee table. But we learned. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just... You know, you you want to protect your kids and you want to have, you know, complete and total control over it. But at the same time, you have to have that mindset that we all had to learn at some point. Your job is to help them learn. You know, your job is to help them grow and, and experience different things. It's not, it, it's, it's you're, you're there to protect them, but you're also here, there to help them learn. You know what I mean? So you got to have, so my mindset is constantly having to to shift to be like, you know, you know, you gotta let her try that. You gotta let her figure it out for herself. You know, can't do everything for her. You gotta let her let her figure it out on her own. Sometimes, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. The Justin story about that, and he's still here. Is uh, we'll, we'll kind of wrap this where it started. When Justin first came in, uh, you know, he was 
wanted to learn more about uh, money in general, investing, that sort of thing. And we sat for an evening. I don't remember how long it was. But at the end of the day, when he did a measured output of a a tangible measure of output, uh, it optimized his uh, one account to give him, what was it, 300% output? I think it was something like that. Yeah, 300% output within uh, a given time period. And he thought that was really good and I called out yeah but there's these things I can do even even better but at, at that point in time he he wasn't ready to make that leap so that's the I view that as Justin him having to learn on his his own like he'll have to understand as he marches forward in, the, in his financial journey to see oh yeah I, I, this is what we did do and this is what was recommended now I can sit back after having like a year's worth of data and kind of look like oh wow that actually multiplied faster than what we did but I wasn't I wasn't in the time or space that I was willing to move on that to take the leap to yeah it's a risk assessment right i mean with that with that stuff specifically mm-hmm. it's, it's almost like gambling you, you don't want to go with any more than you're willing <laughs> to lose is is it, it's kind of how the mindset starts you go in there and you're like you know it, you go in there and you're thinking you know well what if it doesn't work out then 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 what or mm-hmm. or what it's a lot of what ifs but it's it, it's all just a risk a risk assessment that you're willing to make you know, and a lot of it comes based off of you know either trusting the people that are around you that are that you're you're asking advice from, mm-hmm. or just learning on your own. Right. You know, is figuring out where you're comfortable. You know, gambling on. You know, some people. You know, think of all the people that that told uh, when when Bitcoin first came out. Right. All the people are you're crazy. I can't believe you're going to waste money and you're going to put money into that. You know, what about the guy we just were talking about? The other guy that paid 22 bitcoin for a slice of pizza Pizza, you know and then you know 10 years down the road that pizza owner the guy that owned that pizza shop kept that bitcoin and now he's sitting with like 48 million dollars yeah off of one slice of pizza right the pizza owner guy feels like like he just he's a genius and he held on to it the guy that bought the pizza for 22 bitcoin is probably kicking himself in the ass Right. You know, but it was at the time he was just, you know, oh man, this is cool. I want to, you know, nobody knew anything about it, you know, and, you know, everybody said that those people were crazy, but at the height of it, they went from what cents to $43,000. Yeah. You know, not saying that something like that will ever happen again, you never, but you never know. I mean, it, it, you never know. It's inevitable. It tends to. It, it tends, tends to. to. It's just the, the trouble or the challenge is. What is that thing? Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it almost will always happen again. Yeah, in some way, shape, or form, it's going to happen again. It's just, what is it? Yeah, well, what will it be this time around? Yeah. Uh, the the fun part, at least in investing, I, uh, I... So I've been told by people that, oh, you know, beating the S&P, that's hard. Really, like I don't, I don't think I've ever had a year where I didn't beat the S and P by a lot. And yeah, I mean the S and P should be your baseline. Like, the, I guess there's another component where they say the market's unpredictable. I, actually, I think because human behavior is generally predictable. The market is pretty predictable. <laughs> like that's my opinion. I mean, that's a fair. It's um, a fair. It's a fair statement. I mean. be, because think about it this way: people's tastes, wants, desires 
drive purchasing decisions and there's it's influenced by how much money they have and you can say that the companies influence the people by through marketing agree they do the end of the day is you know it's the people's behavior that makes the purchases when you see numbers report right when you see numbers report Mm -hmm. uh, in in any given company that's just a roll-up of the human behavior after the fact if you can understand it while it's happening um, or even kind of get uh, and this is where I think intuition comes in kind of guess what's what's going to be popular. I remember uh, Nicole and I had this conversation maybe a few summers ago. We were listening to the radio and we both picked two songs and uh, the the game was which one's going to get really popular. (laughs) And uh, one of them did and one of them didn't. And uh, if you have that feel or sense per se... I think it, it's not even really, you're not guessing, it's not really guesswork. Um, you, you see the behavior all around you, you see it. In, in fact, I even think it's easier to see the behavior with social media because oh, yeah. it makes it super transparent, right? So, but you know, that's, there are there are folks that I mean there are whole jobs based around predicting people's movements and thoughts and and whatnot and in a majority people are predictable and if people are predictable then yeah. and people drive the market then people find a transitive property then <laughs> the market is predictable yeah it's a hundred percent predictable yeah I mean you're not necessarily going to get it a hundred percent right a hundred percent of the time no nothing's ever a guarantee mm-hmm but your odds are better if you can learn that that prediction. If you can learn, mm-hmm. you know, you know, have that have the mindset to look at it from a different. It, you know, don't look at it as you know a bunch of numbers, or don't look at it as the market. Look at it. Look at it as an after effect of the general population. You know what I mean? If you come at it and look at it from a different angle or a different perspective. Mm-hmm. It changes the way you see it, and it changes your mindset about, you know, how you how you're willing to invest into the market. Right, and there the other thing is the do your homework piece. So at least in investing, I probably spend an inordinate amount of hours looking at info, looking at trying to understand behavior and listening to all the people that you would deem as great investors that have come before me. So in a sports analogy, I'm constantly reviewing tape, reviewing playbook, right? I'm watching film, reviewing playbook. And, you know, that's, I think that's a big key to key to success. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why Outlaw does so well. Like, I didn't... Am I providing a product that people want? Sure. But the question is, like, why did it... it, Why did it explode? Like, why did it grow so quickly? And that's really what I think makes the organization special because um, because it pays attention uh, it pays attention to the people and it pays attention to the community yeah you know it's yeah put that put kind of sum that up in your own words. in my own words I think yeah. I think a good way to put it is you know kind of like how you view money that's kind of how the business is structured it's it's, it's a money second business it really is it's it's yeah we have a product to sell but it's not we don't sell the product 
to make money. You might make money on it 100%. You know, that's, that's why we're in business. But, you know, there's always something that we're doing for community or charity or, you know, that always comes first. You know, what can we do to help this charity or help this organization or help help do this, you know, in the community? And then we, 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 we can make money on the back end. They, you know, the, the, money, the money will always come, but it's never the first thought. It's never, okay, what can I sell this week to make X amount of dollars? Mm-hmm. You know, you have the, the, the Q for a cause and you have, you know, the chips and stuff that we do there. You know, it's always driven to enhance or help the community and help charitable events first. And, you know, the money is just kind of secondary, you know. Yeah. Um, to kind of add to what Justin's talking about, um, there's multiple ways we do that with different organizations. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I've, – I've probably missed some, to be crystal clear, because there's a lot of stuff that comes through email that – might slip through the cracks but anyone who's walked in and said hey can we get some help with this um, this event it's almost there's almost none that we've said no to and what I hear from a lot of other business owners is well, you got to protect your business first. Okay, I, I understand that. This is how I understand that. It takes money to pay rent, utilities, labor, taxes, all of that, right? It, it, so it takes money. So you have to know what you need to make. And that's, that's no different than any business beyond that it's like what are remember this will tie back to the tool money is a tool Mm -hmm. well what is it doing what is it doing is it doing good and I understand so folks that are listening don't beat me up that's a floating definition of what is good that's different to different people well what's good Um, and how can we help support the the community or people in the community that are helping support the community I'll give you the examples because I, I don't know if we've done this yet um, but with the chip for charity component the way that works is there's a every time you make a per- come in and make a purchase uh, at uh, Outlaw 38th and Elmwood Every time you make a purchase, you get a chip, and you take that chip and you drop it into a jar, and we give a portion of that sale to that person's selected organization. To uh, here's what we haven't done. So, Chip for Charity version version 1.0 had uh, Autism Society of Northwestern Pennsylvania, uh, Second Harvest Food Bank. Northwestern Pennsylvania, uh, Dash's uh, barbecue and charity raffle. They specifically raise money for, uh, I think this last time, the Hammett Health Foundation, maybe Lucy's First Steps. It's on the it's on the flyer in the shop. I forget, forget if those were the exact two. But the cool thing about that event it doesn't take any organizational fees um i love that they give a hundred percent of the proceeds uh, directly to charities that's awesome uh so it's that one that one that one emerge care most people don't know that emerge care is uh not it's not a for-profit company so it relies on different vehicle fundraising different vehicles to help fund it so emerge care I, I always thought that was important because 
I think the statistic is they handle in the in about 85% of transport but you got to think about that who are the people that they're transporting people in car accidents mm -hmm. people um, people that get hurt in their homes and those are those are someone's mom someone's dad and uncle brother sister like grandma grandpa you know it's, yeah and, and you don't really think about that you don't really think there's somebody's loved one yeah there's someone special to one and usually a lot more people and without that service where would be where would we be some of these people wouldn't be here and I always thought that was cool about Emergicare. So that's why Emergicare is there. Um, I think that's four. Autism Society, Food Bank, uh, Dashes. Who's... Was it the Crime Victim Center? The Crime Victim Center, yes. The Crime Victim Center is number five. Um, that's the... That's the original five. Well, we, we added early connections they focus on early childhood education so we added them St. Martin Center uh, Deanna Shelter uh, we added uh, who else did we add? Make-A-Wish yeah Make-A-Wish is on there Make -A -Wish is I'm trying on to think of uh, the chars in my head yeah uh, but to give you an example in the version 2 we expanded and there's a couple yeah, I think we went from like 5 to like 10 or 12 didn't we yeah there's 12 jars and I think the last two we're working on um, I think who we're gonna add is uh, what's VC VCME uh, to help support veterans so I think that's that's a good way of talking about what Justin was calling out, um, and it's it's not to be clear. We're, we don't fundraise for them like an event where come to this, come on this date, this time um, to support this organizations and anything anything sold within that time window on this specific day will go to them. No, this is year-round. It runs every day. Um, you get to pick as a, as a consumer. You get to come in and you get to pick. And That's that's one of the interesting things I think about it is too is, is it's not we're not choosing it. It's it's the community. Mm -hmm. you know, the community's coming in and you know they get to choose where where the money goes. You know, it's not. So you can't say that we're biased to this or we're biased to that. It's the community that's choosing. Yeah. If you know. the other the other thing is, most of the additions were community requests. Right. Right. So people said this organization would love to be a part of that, and so we we added it. We'll put I'll put a list in the the notes of the organizations. In, in the Facebook posts, we'll actually go back and uh, tag tag those organizations as well. But that's that's a big part of it. Uh, we have this hashtag that we use: people first. It, uh, we used to like people over profits and people first. And I don't remember specifically when I learned this because I've heard it a number of times from. A number of different people but people are the common denominator of business right uh, no co no consumers no revenue right no employees and we we've come to understand this most recently in the pandemic right no employees reduced production but anyway you slice it it's people are a part of that equation and what do we what do we hear about we hear about 
um, when, when you're sitting around talking with your friends, right? Oh, I work here and here's a work story and this is how I'm treated. But it's all people-centric. And that's what always has kind of puzzled me, that if it, it's so apparent that it's, it's people-centric, why do we focus on the bottom line so much? Like, I get it, you have to stay even. Right, but most businesses do that. Like, maybe, maybe that's a naive view, but uh, businesses that are thriving, they've been around for decades, they're making money, right? Right. So, um, they're part of communities. Why aren't they helping to drive the communities? Because in my mind, if you have the option of, if you're going to buy f functionally the same product, and you have the option of an organization that um, you know sponsors your kid's team, sponsors the uh, the play that your kid is in. Well, you you have the option of buying it from the people that don't sponsor or the people that do and my my big bet this is my gamble this is my big gamble my gamble is if you take care of people and help them build and live the lives uh, that they want and help them grow they'll turn around and help you in return that that's my bet that's my gamble I mean, I'd say that's a pretty safe bet. Well, well <laughs> the answer is I, I can't predict, right? I can't predict. But that's my bet. That is my, precisely my bet. Um, you know, as, as our organization grows, we want to do more. Like, I want to do more. I, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. And there's some people that have given me some comparison to what other folks are doing. And we in certain ways do a lot more but I don't want to get stuck in that comparison I don't want it to be oh I already do better than them in this way and that's good enough to me it's still not so I'm, I'm continuously looking for more ways to to improve that so forward looking to 2023 what are you looking forward to in 23 I don't really think anything is to be specific. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just more looking forward to seeing the the change. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know everything's always constantly changing. Yep. And instead of going into it saying you know it has to be this or it has to be that, mm -hmm. just go into it open and go into it you know fluid and just roll with it and see what see what comes about it. You know, so much changed last year in such a short amount of time without trying mm -hmm. you know and just letting things take their course I kind of want to I mean that's just my personal view into it I'm just going into it you know rolling with it I guess is the best way to put it mm -hmm. you know put your best foot forward and just see what happens kind of thing you know I'm not going into it with any certain hopes or or, or goals specifically in mind mm -hmm. just kind of interested to see how everything all plays out when you just kind of let it all happen naturally. Which is an interesting point to make because I think you as a person, I don't know that you've done that no, a lot. I've never done that. I'm, <laughs> I've always been very, very goal-oriented. Very goal-oriented. Set a specific goal mm -hmm. and do absolutely everything to maintain that goal by a deadline and never after the deadline. Never. Yeah. Whether it was buying my truck, my wife's car, our house, anything, it was always, it was always set the goal, make it happen. It has to happen. There is no other, other options. This year, I'm kind of going into it. You know, nothing necessarily needs to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it's just a way of me saying I guess I'm comfortable with where we're at. You know, it's not. You know, I don't 
necessarily think anything has to have anything anything big happen. We don't necessarily need any huge changes. Am I opposed to it? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Am I against it? No. But am I actively putting it out there and actively being, you know, this is what's going to happen? No. You know, for, for, for right now, I just kind of want to see how things naturally progress. You know, take the opportunities that are presented, roll with them, you know, yep. and, you know, what comes of it comes of it. Half the time, I kind of wonder, and I, I probably should ask everyone in, in, uh, in time, sometimes I think people just stick around just because of that. Just to see what will <laughs> go on. Just, you like, know what, if I just hang out long enough, like I can just see what happens. Because it's, I don't want, it, volatile is not the word. Because volatile means it could crash out at any point in time. But I think, for lack of better terms, on any given day, you could walk in the door and we could be working on a really big deal. And that has been highly unpredictable. Right. You know? It's constantly evolving and adapting. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I don't think Angel could come in on any given day and say there's just a normal Monday (laughs) there's no way that can happen because as 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 it's played out some pretty off the wall things have just landed right it's 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 cool it's weird it's fun to watch I think that's another cool thing Uh, but 2023 for me same same thing there's a lot of things where I know we're gonna change like I spent uh, I, I spent a day at Black Monk uh, Dan wasn't able to make it Joe wasn't able to make it so it was just me that evening and I sat down and mapped out the better part of 2023 um, and it's not like things happen have to by this date by this time by this but period kind of looking at the what how we could make micro improvements and how it could change and what we can tune and when these bigger projects are coming online um, these are some things we need to change to help the flow of it all Mm. so it was it was a it was a good time where I could just sit in between orders and and kind of play with that. Um, so I am looking forward to that. Uh, before before we get out of here, this is to all of you that listened to our last episode, uh, our our recap that Dan and I did. Uh, a lot of you gave me some feedback that I didn't need the background music, so this one. This one won't have the background music. Uh, I hope you guys can hear it a little bit better. I do apologize if there were some vehicle sounds. Uh, This is kind of like a mobile pod. Um, So hopefully that background noise was to a minimum. Uh, That being said, uh, I think we'll cut it here. And uh, we'll come back to you guys next time. I think Dan and I are going to talk about Ribfest a little bit on the next one. But until next time, uh, you know, this is Mike. This is Justin. We got Justin. Yeah. Uh, We'll catch you later. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye now. Hey, guys, you made it through another podcast. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you could do us a quick favor, and if you like this podcast or this episode, please share it with someone 
that you think would like it as well. We are trying to grow the podcast, and we know that word of mouth is one of the best ways to do that. So, Happy New Year to everyone that is listening. Until next time, this is Cowboy Mike. Remember to be kind to yourself. Well, be kind to others, be kind to yourself, and in all things, show compassion. I'll see you next time. Bye now.